What's with all the witchcraft and voodoo in African films? Let's take a deeper look at the Nigerian movie The Figurine to learn more about what these movies say about the occult and how they show it on the screen. The Figurine was first released at the 2009 Rotterdam International Film Festival, where it received high acclaim. It received 10 nominations and won five awards at the 6th African Movie Academy Awards, including the award for Best Picture, Heart of Africa, Achievement in Cinematography, and Achievement in Visual Effects. The idea came about in 2005 by producer and director Kunle Afeyamo right after film school. He says, for me, I think most Africans, most Nigerians, and average African is superstitious. So I was looking around, doing something that would not totally demystify the power of the gods, but at the same time review human participation and our predicament and what happens in our lives. Figurine grapples with the idea of spiritual beings versus human influence as two friends stumble upon a mystical sculpture from the goddess Avoromira, which bestows seven years of good luck and then seven years of bad luck on anyone who encounters the sculpture. Throughout the entire film, the audience believes the sculpture to be the leading influence on the two friends' lives until it's later revealed that it is in fact one of the friends manipulating events to make it seem like it's the gods leaving watchers with the question of what is real and what is not. Animation is an academic term that refers to bringing something to life through human artifice, which is required for spirits to become social beings in many African indigenous religions, the things such as masquerades and shrines. On set in places such as Ghana and Nigeria, animation is seen as most dangerous since spirits may possess props or actors, causing the set crew to think of ways to imitate the occult without animating it. Clues protect themselves through prayer, fasting, substituting material using gibberish and annotations, etc. The figurine grapples with the idea of animation and a human's influence on the term. In the scene that I'm about to show, one sees how the figurine has driven the family to sadness and insanity to, due to their belief that all of their misfortunes are due to the sculpture. The idea of spiritual influence is then juxtaposed in the following scene when the truth comes out. Through this scene, the film itself shows that animation is a result of human interaction. I wanted to come on from first. Clara, just come down. The family was dead. Take it easy. No, Femi. No. Why? Not only did the sculpture impact the characters in the movie, but it also had an impact on the viewers as well. When the screenwriter of the movie discussed the effects of the movie on the casting crew, he said, I remember walking in on a production meeting to hear members of the film crew engage in such a debate on where does your faith lie. I also witnessed a crew member touch the pop idol in hope of seven years of good luck. That moment was profound and frightening all at once, and I was grateful that a plan to have a life-size statue of a rare mirror at the cinema houses wasn't carried through. But I was also curious, if we had, would the audience shrink away from it or touch it for good luck? Learning that the backstory is pure fiction but the name does possess an obscure Yoruba meaning makes one wonder, if the writer decided to use an actual idol, how would that change perspectives of the film, especially since viewers were still willing to believe in the fictional god? 
The figurine is an object that is so little but can have such an effect on one's life. Superstition has a strong influence on many Nigerian lives, which is why it is such a pertinent topic in African films. After watching the figurine yourself, what do you believe?